Hey, Anna Maria, look. George, you found it. Oh, thank you, thank you. All part of the service. Now, let's see just what we've got here. It reads, Below the fortress of the one true patriarch awaits the angel, for he who is worthy and follows the path of the righteous. But which fortress? It says, The first, find the knights who share a horse and grasp the stone to open the way. Maybe... The first refers to the path that the righteous must take to reach the angel. That makes sense. So we should understand the clue once we arrive at the right place. It says, the second, address the arms upon the shields and close the circle for the knights to let you pass. It says, the third, Follow the master's worldly route and prove yourself worthy to lift. First, the fortress where he did fight, but was overwhelmed by Mamluk's might. Then he traveled to Longshank's fair city, and as grand preceptor, he was received. To the temple at Vilnov, where he was appointed grand master of the order, before journeying to the island where he holds his court. It says, the last, to see the light turn from Holy Sion to face the great fortress of the Empire of the East, the seat of the Holy Church in the West, the learned Coptic city to the south. Turn from Holy Sion to face, from where? Jerusalem? Fleur de Lis in some pattern. Now that's a king who really loves himself. A fairly typical depiction of a fortified European city. A deformed holy man gazes over the seas. The fires of hell are consuming the city. Four knights with shields. The fourth coat of arms is hidden. See how the fortified city has minarets? It looks Eastern. Hey, I recognize this. It's Baphomet, the idol that the Templars were accused of worshipping. I really need to find a way to research these subjects. It's Baphomet, the idol that the Templars were accused of worshipping. Worthy and devout looking man. This must be the angel that the manuscript refers to. Doesn't look much like treasure to me. The manuscript was made in 1307. The Templars must have known an attack was imminent and took care the treasure would be safe. Cross, crescent moon, star of David. 
wonder why these symbols are here. Can you decode it, George? Uh-uh, not fully. I need a library or a database. But the streets are too dangerous. Can't we get information online? Well, there is a website. Andre Labano's Society of Antiquarian Knowledge, but I was locked out. Didn't you say that Virgil had hacking skills? Yeah, but he's pretty angry right now. Then get charming. Virgil, I know nothing can replace your MP3 player, but I thought this might ease the loss. Well, what do you know? Same model. Uh, you steal it? No, certainly not. I'm a lawyer. Exactly, so you stole it. Hmm. Well, it doesn't replace the music, though, does it? Ah, heck. I got it all on CD at home anyway. <laughs> Thanks, George. Hey, Virgil, you got five minutes? Sure, what can I do for you? Virgil, I need to get online to do some research. So go online, what's stopping you? Uh, the site I need blackballed me after Glastonbury, locked me out. Take it from me, George, and I've been in prison. Ain't no such thing as locked out. Now where's that little gadget? I know it's here somewhere. There you go, George. This should be useful. What is it? It's a flashcard with a few little features of my own design. Just slip it into your PDA and ride that internet. So, what happened after we barricaded ourselves in? First they broke into your office, then they searched the whole place, then they smashed everything up. Whoa. I bet you showed him a few moves, though, hey, Virgil? Are you kidding? I was under the desk, man. Oh. Well, so what did they do then? Busted my MP3 player and left. Well, that's some story. <laughs> What's so funny, man? Well, you under a desk, Virgil. I mean, <laughs> I wish I'd seen that. You want to keep me as your friend, you better leave it, George. So, uh, how's Anna Maria been holding up? Oh, don't worry about her, man. I talked her into a nice, cool place. Huh? What do you mean? Ah, oh, she's been through a lot, George. She needed a shoulder to lean on. Uh-huh. And you just happen to have one available, huh? You know me, George. Yep, I do. Right, George, this is my homemade hacking system, with the emphasis on homemade, know what I mean? I'll show you how to use it by hacking into a computer owned by an old friend of mine. This is you, symbolized by your PDA. This is your destination, the database you're attempting to hack. What you gotta do is connect your data stream to the target computer without being spotted or stopped. See here, my friend lives on the other side of the state. This mountain range is in the way, so we gotta go around it. If we're gonna hack into the database, we're gonna have to pass through these points, or root nodes. They disguise the data stream from your PDA so you don't get found out. To manipulate the data stream, you gotta use routers and refractors. You understand? You're utilizing other less secure systems in the area. You're pretty limited to what the device can find at the time, but there's normally enough to do the job. This one acts like a mirror. It'll deflect the beam at 90 degree angles. This one refracts your beam at 45 degree angles. These are splitters. They can split a beam at either 45 or 180 degree angles. As the target device is searching for one data stream, you'll need to converge the data streams back into one. You do this using a splitter but in reverse. 
but if you're using a splitter in one direction, you can't use it in the other. These points are the bad boys. They're nodes, which detect what you're up to and stop your hacking. You gotta be one step ahead of these fellas. Accidentally route your data stream into one of these, and your connections bust open. I recommend you plan your route before you start placing nodes all over the place. So, watch me complete this puzzle. There you go. Now let's see what my friend has in his database. Oh no! Oh boy, we didn't want to see that. He is one outrageous dude. Okay, George, your turn. The link with Baphomet proves that there's some kind of Templar connection here. The Templars really were victims of betrayal and greed. Philippe IV, I wonder, did you pay for your sins? Even by medieval standards, Philippe IV was a ruthless, vain dictator. His puppet, Clement V, was no better. Clement V was just a puppet of the king. Did you know popes used to be regularly attacked by mobs in those days? Huh. Can't say I'm surprised. As Napoleon said, history is written by the victors. You know what? I think that the holy man on the right of the manuscript could be Clement V. 
He was Pope of Avignon and Philip's crony. But he can't be the true patriarch referred to in the manuscript. So we just need to work out who is the true patriarch. Jacques de Molay was cynically betrayed by Philippe IV of France. Maybe this guy is the true patriarch referred to in the manuscript. Clement V certainly doesn't fit the bill. It's Baphomet, the idol that the Templars were accused of worshipping. And this looks like St. George, the patron saint of England fighting the famous dragon. Strange. The city on the right looks eastern, but it's being defended by a Christian knight. Wasn't St. George English? Actually, he came from Turkey. If Clement V is not the true patriarch, and St. George, who came from Turkey, is fighting a dragon below the city of a holy man, who is the true patriarch... Yes? Then the city must be Istanbul which was known as Constantinople in medieval times. And the fortress must be a reference to the old citadel of Constantinople. George, that's amazing. Does it still exist? I don't know, but I bet someone in Istanbul would. George, you are brilliant. Thank you so much for helping me. Hey, I'm having fun. I'd never turn down the chance to search for Templar treasure. So, Anna Maria, you feel like a trip to Istanbul? You think we'll find the treasure? We'll have a damn good try. 